Tonight, with monkeypox as a major concern, the U.S. government today has moved to boost vaccine supply by 1.8 million doses. And according to the CDC, at least 13,517 Americans have tested positive. There is a push to slow the spread and prevent this worldwide outbreak from getting worse. Joining us now, the World Health Organization's lead on monkeypox, Dr. Rosamond Lewis. Thank you so much for your time tonight, Dr. Lewis. Big picture, is the World Health Organization thinking about declaring monkeypox a pandemic? Uh, at the moment, the, uh, the situation is that there are 38,000 cases of monkeypox in the world uh, reported, right? Certainly is a concerning figure that the uh, number of cases continues to rise. On the 23rd of July of this year, the World Health Organization declared a public health emergency of international concern. This is under the international health regulations, and uh, it, it is the highest level of alert that the WHO can already declare. Okay. Uh, so we are on alert and uh, doing everything possible. So focusing a little bit on the U.S., it accounts for about a third of all cases worldwide. Why do you think that is? There are a number of countries that have concerning uh, situations. So uh, at the moment, there are other countries in the Americas that are also uh, seeing uh, steep increases in the number of cases. Um, part of that may be, of course, the spread of the virus. So another component may be, of course, uh, increasing access to testing. There are countries in Europe that uh, began their outbreak earlier, and they are already beginning to see some t uh, sort of leveling off of the new cases being reported. Dr. Lewis, when you speak about control, 98% of the cases have been among men, almost all of whom are men who have sex with other men. But how can you balance the need to warn gay men that they're at higher risk without stigmatizing them? It's a really fine uh, line to walk, and it's a really most important question. So thank you for that. It's, it's the most important uh, work that any public health agency can be doing right now and working with community organizations of uh, people who are affected by this outbreak. Contributing to stigma is, is not a solution, not for anyone, because what happens with that is it actually undermines the outbreak response. Contributing to stigma in any way it may drive people away from testing, drive people away from uh, seeking uh, vaccines. They may even drive people away from seeking care. And so in that way, the, the outbreak can continue to spread. That makes sense. And to your point that all segments of the population feel supported. We would like to do a quick rapid fire round through some of the common questions that people may have. I hope you're OK with that. But First up, can the virus be spread among people with no symptoms? This is something we don't know yet. We do know that people can have infection without symptoms, but it is not yet known whether they can spread it at that time. It's another area that we're monitoring very closely. Can you get infected twice? This has occurred. People have been infected more than once. Uh, we don't know yet how often this might happen. And what are the first signs of infection? The first signs of infection uh, normally in the classic uh, situation where monkeypox uh, has been known for a very long time. This is not a new disease, remember? So the first symptoms have been fever, uh, feeling unwell, backache, um, muscle aches, and then followed by a rash. In the outbreak we're seeing right now, sometimes that is flipped around. Sometimes people are having a, a rash and then followed by uh, fever or other symptoms. And the rash can be... Uh, you know, milder or it can be more severe. It, it, we are basically seeing a whole range of uh, how this uh, disease can present right now. Lastly, Dr. Lewis, with schools starting across the globe, there is a concern about cases starting to spread more among children. What do people need to know in that context? Well, the, uh, you know, the, the people who are at risk at the moment, so this pattern, as you've described, has been very consistent. And the, and the, the folks who are at higher risk and need to figure out, uh, you know, what information they need to protect themselves are people who are having um, predominantly multiple sexual partners. It doesn't have to be only men. It can be um, other groups who, who may be having activ sexual activities with, with uh, people that uh, they don't know so well or, or in, in situations where there are multiple partners at once. So this could happen on a college campus, for example. 
Um, obviously, uh, we're talking about young people here. The risk to children is really uh, quite low at the moment because the, their spread in the general population has not really ma manifested. It's not taken off. We have seen some children exposed um, in different uh, ways, but the really, numbers are really very really small at the moment. And uh, usually that happens in, in a household setting. Uh, and um, that is typical. That is very common. Uh, it has always been known that people can transmit through hugging, kissing, um, um, whether that be uh, household members who also share towels, for example. And so historically for monkeypox, this has been described as the mode of transmission is close proximity in the household. Um, that continues to occur in the uh, original setting in the African context, and it is also occasionally now occurring in um, the outbreak in other parts of the world. Thank you for lending us your expertise, Dr. Rosamond Lewis. We really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.